Hi, I'm Les Unfordorban, CEO of Ospath Agency. Together with my esteemed cousin, Frank Unfordorban, our managing director, we co-founded Ospath, driven by a pressing need, the shortage of skilled nurses in Australia. In the heart of this challenge, we recognise the urgency to act. The aged care sector in Australia is facing a shortfall of nearly 140,000 workers by 2025, with 30 to 35,000 nurses needed each year, according to CEDA. Through our thorough research and discovery, we found that on the other side of the world, numerous talented international nurses dreamt of contributing to Australia's healthcare. However, the path to AFRA registration was riddled with complexities and barriers, making it impossible for many to consider Australia as a career option. That's where Auspath stepped in. We streamlined the AFRA registration process, offering a faster and cost-effective journey for international nurses. Our transitional pathway not only simplifies AFRA registration, but also navigates the complexities of visa requirements, including DHARMA and company-specific labour agreements. This streamlined approach ensures international nurses can start their Australian nursing career without unnecessary delays. Our strategic process helps navigate the complex process all the way through to selecting the most appropriate visa. This helps to ensure longevity and dedication from employees for healthcare organisations, leading to permanent residency for employees and retention for employers. Navigating this process correctly will ensure success, but getting it wrong can lead to a disaster. That's why you need an experienced team that knows the process thoroughly, all the ins and outs. The last thing employees want is to go through the whole recruitment and migration process, only to have the employees leave after a short time. We also developed an intuitive online portal that connects nurses with employers, seamlessly making the entire process streamlined and efficient. Our approach isn't just efficient, it's also financially empowering. OSPATH optimises the costs associated with AFRA registration, enabling nurses to pursue their dreams without financial burdens. With OSPATH, international nurses don't just navigate registration, they embark upon a transformative journey. Our pathway riches careers, ensuring dedicated professionals for employers and fulfilling careers for nurses. Our collaborations with industry leaders like IPASS Processing, Lee Care Solutions, Oslomed and Christie Migration ensure a constant supply of the world's most dedicated nurses. These partnerships provide our candidates with the best training, resources and support, making them highly sought after professionals. For employers, compliance is crucial, especially in aged care where the new 24-7 registered nurses and care minutes requirements demand careful attention. OSPATH not only meets these staffing needs, but also tackles compliance obligations head on. Our nurses fulfil all employer requirements, easing the burden on training and ensuring quality care delivery. They seek permanent residency and career advancement, making them valuable long-term assets for any organisation. So join hands with OSPATH today and be part of a movement that revolutionises healthcare staffing, enhances patient care, empowers careers and fosters global alliances. So register with OSPATH now at www.ospath.agency and transform challenges into opportunities. Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to OSPATH's webinar, the only platform providing you the wealth of information on how you can progress your nursing career in Australia. In our session, where in our session where we share valuable information that we help you in planning, preparing, and for you to be able to succeed on your nurse career in Australia. I'm Rachel, I'm your host for OSPATH's webinar, and along with me are my co-hosts, our CEO, Les Anferdorben, and our Managing Director, Frank Anferdorben. And I am thrilled to welcome you all in our webinar for today. I'd like to welcome, by the way, all our Facebook Live session audience, we have here Sir Irvin Neil Temporal, the CEO and founder of 9.09 er as well, Ms. Jeanette, Ms. Morga, who is one of our clients, and actually she's already a pastor for OSCE, and Janelle Dashapurdes. Hello to everyone and to all our Facebook Live viewers. Good afternoon to all of you, wherever you are in the world. We have a very exciting session lined up and we are more than grateful that you could share this Facebook link to your friends and colleagues who are also nurses 
tag your friends through the comment section or share this uh, Facebook Live discussion in your Facebook wall and make it public so that your friends can be able to see and join our discussion. Our objective on this webinar is to reach as much nurses as we can so they can make use of this information to their advantage. Now, let me go. Let me turn you over to our managing director, Sir Frank Anfer Dorben, to introduce you our very special guest who has been a visionary in the aged care sector and a driving force behind innovative solutions that has transformed how Australian aged care sectors and healthcare professionals deliver care. She has a wealth of experience in healthcare management and a deep commitment to improving aged care through technology. She has been instrumental in developing tools that empower care providers to deliver the highest level of care. Her insights and leadership continue to shape the future of aged care, not just in Australia, but globally. Now, I will let Sir Frank provide you more information about our very special guest. Frank, over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our um, our regular webly, uh, weekly or bi-weekly webinar, Facebook Live session. We're very, very honoured today to have our special guest, Dr. Caroline Lee, join us. Dr. Caroline Lee has been um, one of the most important people in Australian healthcare framework and society with over 40 years as a registered nurse. Um, Dr. Caroline Lee, over 30 years ago, started Lee Care. Lee Care Solutions has been um, instrumental in providing value services to Australian healthcare providers focusing on aged care. Aged care software requires congruency of information. That means that one information must match the others, whether or not it's be on your regular progress notes, your nursing care plans and your assessments. In the Australian healthcare framework, that is critical for an employer, for an organisation to achieve and to obtain a, appropriate funding for their residents. Dr. Caroline Lee um, is also, just happens to be my sister as well. So very, very special guest and we're so happy that she can join us today. Um, Caroline is going to discuss the importance of documentation for registered nurse and carers coming into the Australian healthcare framework. That really has three main points in there that we're going to be focusing on today. And Dr. Caroline Lee will also be talking about the Lee Care Program, the Platinum Six Program. The three main areas of documentation that we'll be focusing on today is progress notes, which is um, essential in making sure you have an accurate uh, reporting of care given to your residents. The assessments and what that involves and how that actually addresses the requirements for the Australian healthcare standards and nursing care plans and what that actually looks like and why that's actually crucial for your day-to-day -day care of any resident in your care or any patient in your care. So I'll hand it over now to Dr. Caroline Lee. Thanks, Caroline. And we'll just unmute you. I'll unmute. <laughs> Thank you, Frank, and welcome everyone to this special session. I'm just going to share my screen and go through a quick presentation and explain what the framework in Australia is. My background, as Frank said, is to be a registered nurse or is as a registered nurse and working with homes under sanctions from about 1992, which were the homes that had to prove that they met standards. And Australian standards framework is really, it's very embedded within the sector through legislation. And there is actually a new Aged Care Act about to be released, a bit delayed at the moment, but likely next year. And every activity that is conducted in aged care in Australia must meet those standards and must also comply in paperwork and documentation and evidence-based documentation to receive the funding that the Commonwealth Government provides. So the Commonwealth Government won't give funding unless you have met the standards. And there are also documentation requirements because they also fund care 
but they won't give you the funds for that care unless you've got the evidence about the care needs of the people in your care. So I thought I'd just start with a very quick PowerPoint and I'm just going to share my screen and then and then I'll give you a bit of an idea of what a computer program in Australia actually looks like. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can, Caroline, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. And so just a little bit of an advert, but just in terms of aged care, there are standards and there are requirements for residential aged care, which is in the old terminology, the nursing home sector. Retirement living, there are other legislative requirements for retirement living, but we're talking more about residential aged care where you're going to be. And in the home and community care and support at home type sector, there are also standards that are legislated under the Commonwealth as well. Now, the Platinum 6 suite, which we'll just show you very quickly, and is based upon professional gerontological nursing standards. Each of these countries that we're in have standards that are required to be met. So Australia has had a very established standards framework, as has New Zealand and Singapore and the UK. And with China and Africa, they are emerging entities or countries where there are standards that are coming. And the expectation is that the staff in this aged care sector in Australia actually use app technology, use tablets and use computer technology to record the document to record the documentation needs and requirements of residents. And there are many examples of these uses of the various different tools for medication rounds, for care documentation, for wound management, or just for recording daily charting. And we'll go through a little bit of that in a moment just to give you a perspective of what that involves. Now, obviously, when you are caring for an older person in an aged care environment, you are dealing with every aspect of their life. So the standards that we have in Australia actually deal with catering as well as um, the clinical needs of a person. And what the expectation is, is that you manage a person from mid pre-admission all the way to separation in whatever form that separation is. And you do need to have systems that encourage and support consistent evidence-based clinical governance across the entire organisation. And the concept of evidence-based and best practice is quite extensive in Australia. So out of the box, your systems need to meet all of the quality standards. And these standards include consumer dignity and choice, where you have to make sure that you have all your care documentation personalised, that your goals of care and your assessments that you assess a person in terms of every aspect of their life, create care plans that you will have to monitor and practice all day, every day with the residents that you will be supporting. And the apps that are used at point of care are designed to give you that support for the charting. There are care plan apps where you can also involve the family and the client or the resident as well. So consumer dignity and choice is, is an absolutely fundamental standard of the current standards, the enhanced nursing home standards that are coming later or the enhanced um, quality standards coming in later um, with the new act, the new legislation. They will very much expand upon this concept of consumer dignity and choice and making sure that you know every aspect of a person and that their daily support that you provide is based upon those choices and knowing that individual intimately. So the second standard is all about ongoing assessment and planning. So you have to enter your data, you have to make sure that your care plans are reflective of the assessment and the data that you have and then you need alerts because care and caring is not something that is the same all day, every day. You need to have a system that can constantly alert you and remind you of the various different aspects of your care day. And that's what the computer technology in Australia is designed to achieve. So wherever you go in Australia, there will be generally an assessment and care planning software system of some sort hopefully ours, but of some sort that will be assisting you and guiding you and providing you alerts and reminders of the various things that you have 
identified as a need for the people who you are supporting. So you do want your assessments to create your care plans because the data has to match. You cannot assess a need and then not have it appear on a care plan if it's a key need. And you can't have your care plans include details that you have not assessed as being a absolute fundamental requirement of that person. So your care plan, the plan of care that you will provide each day to the individual person clearly has to be reflective of every aspect of that person's life, their personal goals and their clinical, medical and lifestyle requirements. So the third standard in the Australian framework does deal with personal care and clinical care. So weights and vital signs, absolutely, but bowels not being open, having making sure that you have wound care plans, infections, incidents, and then your progress notes need to reflect that so that every health professional that is involved in that resident's care, that each of them are using the same set of notes, that the notes are a combination of your nurses, your carers, your doctors, your OT, your physiotherapist, your speech pathologist, your dietitian, so that the entire health professional network who are contributing to the support, that they're all using the same information and they're referring to the same details. And one, of course, that's to save each professional having to do their own assessments when they can refer to each other's but also a resident having to tell you over and over again, all their families, if the resident can't, what their care needs are today, what their clinical care and personal care requirements are. So the technology needs to support you in that journey. The fourth standard deals with services and supports for daily living. So that includes the personal care, but it also includes the food that you eat and the type of food should reflect your preferences, your cultural requirements. There is no point in giving a person from Italy something that they're not going to understand or they're not going to want to eat when they have dementia and they don't want to eat or someone from India or someone from any place within the world to give them food that they're not familiar with means they're not going to eat and they're not going to drink. And so that is one fundamental aspect, but also swallowing a lack of ability to swallow is the biggest killer in aged care across the world. People choking in aged care is one of the, is if not in some countries, the biggest killer. And so it's not just about their food preferences and encouraging them, making sure that they are given food and drinks that are familiar to them, that they will eat so that they don't become dehydrated and malnourished in your care. But it's also, so it's the type of food, but it's also the consistency, the international dietary details, the IDSI requirements need to be met. Now that then means you have to have proper communication between your care staff, your nursing staff, the kitchen, the cook, the chef, the catering people, the support staff who distribute the breakfast, the morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, and then their supper. So that at least each of those times through the day, six times a day, at least someone is looking at that person and ensuring that they're drinking and eating appropriately and they're not losing weight. So the fourth standard is very much about that. Then the fifth standard is about the organisation's service environment. So that includes looking at the catering services, looking at the cleaning services, the laundry services, and all of the diversional therapy and activity and allied health services. Because as we know, a nursing home, aged care, residential care environment has to provide all the hotel services that a five-star hotel should be providing. But embraced in with that is all of the clinical, medical and lifestyle support that a person needs to have each day. So an organisation service environment, the maintenance of the building, making sure that you've got preventative and corrective programs, that your occupational health and safety of your staff and then the safety of the residents within the environment is guaranteed every single day. 
must be and is required in Australia as part of your policies and your procedures so that every day everyone knows what they're practising, they all know what the preventative maintenance program is, they all understand what the cleaning program is, how to distribute the laundry of every single resident because each resident will be in either their own bedroom with their own ensuite and their own cupboards and their own furniture to an extent or things around them that recognise and give them an ability for reminiscence. But then, and sometimes though, they might be in a shared room, they might be in a shared bathroom, but generally each person will have their own clothes, their own environment, their own things around them to remind them and reminisce about their life. And it is expected that the organisation will support that and make sure, oops, sorry, that the organisation will make sure that each person is going to be supported to maintain that. The sixth standard is feedback and complaints. So it is very well recognised that you have to have a very robust feedback and complaints mechanism where you are having regular monthly meetings with residents so that you are capturing all their families any complaints or any feedback that they have to improve your services so that every single month at least you have the opportunity together with the families and residents or their loved ones that they have the opportunity to talk to you about what they need in the environment that your service environment is providing them and their lived experience of that environment it's important that you have these opportunities and that you prove it. So you need to document the meetings of these minutes. You need to document who are the committee members, who are the people who've attended these minutes, what have you identified, where is your action plan, what are your continuous improvements that you have undertaken to ensure that all of these different aspects of life that the residents and their families or loved ones have told you that they need in order to feel empowered, to feel loved, to feel like they're still a part of society and that they are still valued members of our community, that you act on it and prove to the auditors when they walk in the door that that item identified in that meeting has been addressed. This is the feedback after you've addressed it and if there's any further improvements required that you have continued to act on those. These are fundamental standards that are so embedded in the culture of Australia's aged care sector that it's not expected that you just have a token document. You must prove the entire quality cycle has been addressed. And then, of course, the final couple of standards relate to human resources. How do you support your staff in order to provide those services in a safe and effective and supported way because clearly working in aged care can be challenging, can be very wearing and can be so rewarding though if given the right supports and if the staff are empowered to also contribute to the organisation's requirements and are advocates for their residents that they're supporting and that they are enabled as staff to feel as though they are part of the organisation and the quality outcomes of those residents that they're supporting. So human resource management, supporting staff and making sure your environment is in an empowering manner um, managed is a fundamental standard. So it's not just an expectation of a good organisation, it's a requirement within the aged care sector standards. Now, to do all of this, to have all of these organisational governance, managed management requirements, you need to have staff details, competencies, questionnaires, orientation programs, employment records, appraisals, performance management documented. You need to have your quality, your continuous improvement and all your meetings documented. All incidents, whether they're resident incidents, staff incidents, organisation incidents, hazards, risks, all of these need to be documented. They need to be identified and they need to have action plans proven to get to the end point and completion of the resolution that's required for any risks or hazards. Your education and credentials and your training plans need to prove that 
you have identified the requirements and the needs of your residents and a quality organisation and that your staff have undertaken those programs, that they have the right education and credentials and they understand their responsibilities and have the relevant level of clinical expertise that they can provide the support that's necessary for an older person who has multiple, multiple medical conditions, who might have nine, 10 and more medications every day to support those multiple medical conditions, which is the reason why they are in the nursing home residential aged care environment. And you don't become a resident of a residential aged care environment unless you have that frailty, that dementia, that confusion, or that physical inability to function and to undertake your activities of daily living. And so therefore, it's expected that the staff who are supporting them, that they understand how to provide the support required for all of those different aspects of the older person's um, in a presentation. You clearly too then also need documents, policies, procedures, instructions, work details, work and conformance of legislative requirements for health and safety as well, so that the staff have references in order to be able to know what is expected of them. And then of course too, as an organisation, you want to be able to build forms, build reports, make sure that you have the capability as an organisation to use your software in a way that it represents your organisational needs. And that is where the software systems that you find, hopefully, when you come to Australia, when you start working in this sector, will have as a capability. So that then as an organisation, you can configure and enhance the system to be more representative of you as an organisation professionally identifying what's relevant for the residents under your support and your care. You need to be able to use any device. And in Australia, the My Health record is where all details about an individual person are saved in a portal against you, your name, your Medicare number. So the My Health record system also needs to be accessible from whatever system you have. And the My Health record is contributed to by the hospitals that provide support, by specialists, by medical practitioners, and by residential aged care organisations and the incidents, the infections, the wounds, any of the discharge letters and specialist letters that are distributed upon a person's care journey should be available, including their medications, any pathology reports, any um, any type of um, x-rays or blood or other workup reports should be available in the My Health Record and you should have that access. There's also a requirement in Australia that every three months, every quarter, that organisations submit reports to the government portal in terms of antipsychotic use, activity of daily living levels, any consecutive and significant unplanned weight loss any detailed quarter pressure injury details that are required. And then they also include consumer experience reports, quality of life reports. So it's expected that you survey and that you assess every quarter these different individual areas thoroughly and submit to the government in the format that they must have it in these different reports. So you also need a software system that can give you these falls and major injury reports, the incontinence care reports, looking at the polypharmacy, look at how many medications that person has throughout your whole organisation. What are your averages? What are your details? There's also a requirement for reporting any hospitalisations and then, of course, pressure injuries, as I mentioned before, and physical restraints. So it is expected that in Australia you have minimum, if no restraints, that your restrictive practices are in a are applied in a dignified manner that does not restrict a person unnecessarily, and that includes having beds that go to the ground, so that when a person is sleeping, they get to sleep without bed rails and never ever have a bed rail, unless 
there is just so much thorough documentation to prove that that is the only option of how you can support that person. So you have beds that go down to the ground and then you have sensor mats and pads on the floor. So should they roll out of bed that they are detected immediately. So restraint use in Australia is at the most minimum it could possibly be. The requirement for you to not have pressure injuries and to always give pressure area care so that nobody ever gets a wound and a pressure injury is a fundamental tenet of the requirements of the standards. And that therefore means incontinence care is a fundamental tenant because it's such a contributor, as we all know, to wounds and pressure sores or pressure injuries as well. So the quality requirements and the reporting that you're expected to do is quite extensive. Again, why we have so much um, software involvement in the sector. And just recently, they've now introduced, this is the Commonwealth and the sector monthly care statements in October of this year, there will be an expectation of certain requirements that you must monthly report to all your residents and their loved ones. And that includes what the diagnosis is of that person when their last GP visited, when a last care plan review was conducted, what the weight of that person is, the change of their weight, any chemical restraint use, any mechanical restraint use, how many falls that person's had and whether that's increased or decreased from last month, any pressure injuries, an increase or decrease from last month if they've had any, what medication number they have and any changes in medications over that month, including any serious reportable incidents, hospital visits, appointments, what their food and nutrition program is, what activities they've undertaken through the month, the frequency of those activities, and then any significant feedback between the multidisciplinary team and the resident and the families or loved ones of that person. So you can imagine if you had to report this monthly, and in October not all of these requirements are reportable, but there is an expectation over the next year that these will become monthly reportable requirements. You cannot do that without software. And so it is imperative that you understand that software will be required as a fundamental part of the care program that you provide each day because all these details that you capture need to create these reports so you do not have to do these reports at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter. Okay, and so you do have apps where you do select your residents and your daily charting, your weights and vital signs, your progress notes, any infections, wounds, etc., can be accessed by your staff so that they all know what it is that's required of them. And if you're doing home and community care support, that of course you've got your GPS coordinates and that the answers that are given are exactly as per the aged care organisation and their forms and their care plans. And the same with the app for the residents or clients and their families. So you need to be able to also provide an opportunity for them to contribute. You wanna have a system, as I mentioned before, that has the ability as an organization to customize forms and create reports automatically, but also ones that you as an organization need to also have. And you need a system that will also provide, because we have in Australia numerous specialty software programs. There are international systems with governments that these software systems need to support and connect to, medication management systems, pain systems, wound systems, monitoring, weights and vital machinery, laundry cards, and then, of course, beds monitoring, clinical monitoring, and then of course catering and all of the food and the capturing of the food requirements and preferences of people, and then the menus, etc. Then there's also risk management, quality lifestyle apps that do surveys, etc. There are staff learning management programs, finance programs that capture all of the invoicing and the government subsidies that are received, the rostering and payroll, obviously, and then other patient management systems that are linked to government portals. And then, of course, you also want to have a system that can provide you the interrogation of your data in an analytical way that gives you business intelligence for you to be able to function. 
You need a system and you will be working with systems that deal with the 10 rights of medication administration and even hopefully your wound measuring programs so that you don't have to use different tools in order to do that. So I'm just going to basically show you very quickly what a program might look like and then we'll finish up, Frank, <laughs> with just a very quick... So as you said, progress notes are a fundamental part and you want progress notes to come from some of the assessments that you are completing, but also the ability to be ab able to add a note, pick a person and write what is important. So assessment changes, things that are being dealing with handover, etc. So you need progress notes that are contributed to by all the health professionals in that person's care. And then when you want to actually look at that person, you want to be able to see all the key information that is relevant about that person so that you are, as a staff member, reading about that person, knowing their medical details, what are their allergies and sensitivities and observations, but their dietary details, their mobility details, their continence, their bathing preferences, their religious and spiritual, and their life story. And then if you're going to look at a care plan, you actually want a care plan that will identify quite nicely for stuff from your assessments, all of these sorts of details in a manner that you as a staff member can read easily and know straight away what are their medication issues, what are their mobility and dexterity needs, what are their pain management needs, toileting, nutrition, and so on, vision, sleep, emotional relationship, stress, intimacy, spiritual, culturally, socially, their community involvement, their communication, their hearing, their vision needs, their urinary continence, their skin, their tissue, their oral and dental needs, any sensory care, pain, taste, clearly, and then personal hygiene, bowel management, behaviour support, restrictive practices that might be needed, and any behaviour and palliative care requirements. So your system needs to, one, be able to capture those sorts of details and the assessments that you will be expected to deal with are going to include everything from professional validated tools to assessments that deal with behaviour, medical conditions, cognitive, the communication, hearing, speech, any complex healthcare needs, confusion, continence, depression, dietary, dietitian, nutrition, dignity of risk, any food and swallowing and nutritional needs, emotional needs, falls and other risks and safety needs, functional activities of daily living. And as you all know, that includes the ability of the person to be able to transfer, what help they need for transferring in and out of bed, in and out of chairs, on and off the toilet, any mobility needs that they have, ability to mobilise, any encouragement to stand, any lifting machines, standing machines, wheelchairs, anything at all that they might need help with, any movement in bed, meals and drinks support, any personal hygiene requirements, including dressing, undressing, washing, grooming, podiatry needs, and then, of course, continence, including toileting, how many staff, what assistance they require, encouragement they require, etc. And just one last thing, pictures speak a thousand words and that's why we also have, and I'll just find one that should have pictures, you also want a system that can give you and show you the pictures that are relevant to the care of that person so that you're actually providing and staff have access to a nice picture care plan relevant, especially if their English isn't so great. So you actually, and I'll just Easter Bunny's picture care plan, I'll just click on that and view the report and you'll see hopefully that there are various different details and pictures that will guide staff and assist them to oh, even know where room. in the dining room this person should be. <laughs> so... I'm going to probably finish up with that, except to just give you one last final um, look at the types of assessments that you'll have, because you do need to be aware that this in our standards environment, 
good lives, health management, spiritual needs, leisure and cultural needs, medication management needs, nutrition and experience and surveys that deal with pain, that deal with people's quality of life and their experience, oral and dental pain, preferences, relationships, restrictive practices, sensory, sexuality, skin, sleep, social, spiritual, cultural, and pressure area management, all of these will be expected of you to assess and your daily charting will include a whole range of things that you'd be familiar with, but anticoagulant therapy to continence, to daily repositioning, to doctor's visits, to feedback to staff, food and fluid, but home care, oxygen monitoring, pain monitoring, hygiene care provision, restrictive practice monitoring, sleep monitoring, etc. So the standards and all of the contents of the different systems that you have and the allied health systems are all there because in the quality environment within the aged care sector of Australia, it is expected that we provide and we know the people that we're supporting intimately because they're with us 24 seven, some of them for many, many years and we want to make sure that they have a quality of life that is dignified and reflective of how we, and I'll just stop. Um, Thank stop you, <laughs> Dignified of how we would want to live if we were to be in that care and how we would want our loved parents and aunts, uncles, whoever it might be that we support and care for and love, how we would want them to have their daily care needs met. And that's it. Thank, Thank you. So, Caroline, that's fantastic. Um, one of the things there that we may see just in regards to the volume of information that is required day to day in uh, what we call long term care, which is basically what aged care is. It's not like your acute care settings that you'd have in a general hospital. This is basically this is their home. This is you know their lifestyle. It's complete holistic. So, what we're actually looking here in a uh, digital system and uh, that goes through. A couple of the notes I've put in here is that, uh, especially Lee Cares Platinum 6 software, which is groundbreaking software, it's a multi um, networked care environment, enabling holistic and dynamic care across a complete team based care environment. So it's not That's just right. your ticker box uh, care that you, that some cultures actually adopt out there where it's just basically uh, via a checklist and ticking and then ticking off that you've done this care. The requirements for Australia are vast, but one of the beautiful things about a robust software system is we talked about that word congruency, that means matching data, all right? Um, I'd just like for, uh, just as a quick example, currently if you could share your screen again, uh, you, you talked initially the, the, import, the importance of nutrition. So one of the things that I know because I've, work with Lee Care uh, quite extensively over the years there. As an example, if you enter some information into a food or a nutrition assessment, how that information actually writes itself and is matching in something such as a speech pathology or a di dietary assessment. And the reason why this is so important is our international nurses here from the Philippines are looking at all of the different assessments and all the levels of documentation required and it's going to be daunting. Oh, my God, there's not enough time in the day to actually document all this. How does something like Lee Care actually assist in, number one, making sure that the optimum care is delivered via correct and accurate congruent documentation and how we actually save time and stress levels of these nurses? If you could give us a bit of a demonstration of that, please. For sure. And so as you can see here, this is showing that this actual information in this speech pathology assessment came from the health management assessment form. So the diagnoses, that the diagnosis of diabetes came from actually an evacuation form that was filled out. The diagnosis of dementia came from an admission form, that the diagnosis of MS came from a health management form and ischemic heart disease came from an admission health management form. So what we've done and what a good quality system does is it identifies throughout the entire program's content all the bits of information that are relevant and that are necessary to be known by all the health professionals and it makes sure 
that these details are shared between the assessments so that you only ever have to enter the data once. And so as you can see here, there's a dietary details assessment. There. And these details, if I change this to minced and moist in the nutrition consistency of the speech pathology assessment, and I save that, if I then go back and I can create a progress note, so it will go into the progress notes automatically that that changed. So I'll just show you the progress notes. It says now this has been changed so that anybody reading that progress note will know straight away that this has been updated. Now, if I'm looking now at the dietary details form, I will see that those details have been automatically added to my dietary details. And here and I've got now minced and moist. For number one, exactly. not able to write the same information multiple times, multiple assessments. Exactly. With the assurance that the information is actually exact from one to the other. And this is so important to ensuring, as we said, to make sure that the auditors, which is in Australia, you might want to talk a little bit about that, but um, the assessment of care is audited by the Commonwealth Department. Okay, so at any time uh, through during a three-year period of time, and uh, I think it's the same, Caroline, correct me if I'm wrong, but over a three-year period of time, the department, Commonwealth Department can go into any uh, healthcare organisation and check the validity of that documentation that has been written for care. Um, exactly. And, that, and what... And what they do is they assess and they say, right, well, you've now got a care plan. Where is it proven that you have assessed that need and it has exactly gone to the care plan? And that is why it's so important that you make sure that you have that congruency that you were talking about. So here's a diet consistency. It's here. It's the minced and moist exactly as we selected in that area. And they will assess, they will look at the care plans, they will look at your assessments and they will make sure that is what their auditing is all about. And every three years is a very formal accreditation audit that covers all of those standards that I mentioned, but they can come in at any time and they can do a quick assessment and find if these details at any point in time without warning walk through your door and check that it is congruent throughout and the care plan is exactly as assessed and that it is then not just assessed but evaluated and reviewed and made sure that it is regularly completed, which does mean also, as you were saying, Frank, that you also need to have and keep an eye on and you need alerts and systems so you know how old some of the assessments are and that you are reviewing those and making sure that you have completed those forms and those details in a timely fashion. And then you want to make sure you have sufficient so the, alerts that are telling you. One, one of the, um, the the great things about Lee Care and their experience within this field is that never has it been known that an organisation that is properly using the Lee Care program has ever failed an audit. So. That is an incredible achievement with uh, thousands of organisations out there, over hundreds of thousands of beds and residents being looked after, uh, that the auditors, it, it is a proven track record there. So uh, that, that in itself is an incredible, incredible achievement. One of the other questions that we've got uh, just coming through there uh, from comments in there is in regard to the registered nurse coming into Australia is their professional duty of care and the requirement for documentation as part of number one they have their training in their cpd all ospath placed nurses or anyone that coming through the ospath um, uh, agency will enjoy free training in the lead care product and software product especially if they're going to uh, a lead care um, employer that is actually interviewing them so this is what a lot of employers are actually excited to see that the digital literacy and that training has been achieved by OSPATH candidates coming into Australia. Uh, we also have obviously our partner organisation there with OSMED that provides uh, the CPD, Continuing Professional Development, and OSMED also uh, touch on the essential eight quality standards there um, for aged care as well. And that, that goes into, um, I'll just bring it up very quickly up on my screen 
screen if I can. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll share my screen as well. Thank you, everyone. Uh, window. I'm hoping that people can actually see uh, my screen. Just yell out if, if you can, when you can. Can people see that? Yep, we can see, yep. Sure. So um, Osmed actually provides free training for Ospath, for all uh, people coming through Ospath in these essential eight uh, areas, uh, uh, touching on the aged care quality standards, fire safety and residential aged care, minimising restrictive practices in aged care, which is, is not just physical restraint, that is also chemical restraint for medications as well. And that, that has been uh, in the past in Australia and in other uh, places around the world, um, a, a very important uh, factor to consider. And that's uh, very much encouraged that people go through and understand that. Bullying, harassment and discrimination in the workplace, infection, prevention and control, serious incidents response scheme, work, health and safety. And the interesting one in there that is not talked about often though is open disclosure and policy. And again, that comes back through um, to what we see. Sorry, I'll just <laughs> unshare. I'm not too sure how to do that. Uh, I might get uh, Rachel to take control, actually, <laughs> there might be easier. Um, thank you. Is, uh, again, that talks about your professional duty of care. All right, so open disclosure and apologies in there. Um, it's basically you're, you're responsible for the care that you're giving to people. So if you make a mistake, be open and upfront about that. Okay, so it is a requirement and it's actually very refreshing to know that in the Australian healthcare framework, that is now a requirement in aged care. So um, we'll just go through, Rachel, if there's any uh, any other questions or comments or anything coming back through from the audience, or if you had any um, questions. I can't actually, see, well. I cannot see any comment here or question coming from our audience, Frank, but on the perspective of an international nurse, because I am a nurse myself, so if I put myself on an international nurse's shoes and I will be working in Australia, I can see that there's really a lot of things that I have to work on and adjust as well if I'm coming from the Philippines. Um, these are things like progress notes, nurses notes, all of those assessments which were mentioned by Dr. Caroline were familiar to me. However, I think as an international nurse, I really need to adjust the moment that I will be in Australia working as a nurse there. And that's what's good about um, OSPATH agencies because you are going to provide free training with regards to the documentation that these international nurses will be able to um, will be able to work as well, so that they will be have familiarization when it comes to what are the documentation things that you have to know, because you're coming from the Philippines and you might not be familiar with these things. Um, so that's really a good thing that OSPATH is providing, as well as the one that you have mentioned that they so are providing. Just to let people know as well. Thank you, Rachel. Just to let people know as well that um, the training, for example, what we call boot camp training in Lee Care is generally a half day training. So it's not overly um, extensive. As we say, um, if you can use the mobile phone or you can use a laptop computer, you can definitely do uh, doc, uh, digital documentation in the Australian healthcare framework. There is, um, there is some questions that are just coming through there. And I'll, I'll ask Dr. Caroline Lee, um, to address one of them there is in regards to uh, nurse patient ratios and how that how that has actually changed now in the Australian healthcare framework, especially in aged care, uh, we don't actually have nurse uh, patient care ratios anymore. We've moved to a care minutes model. And I'll ask Caroline to uh, just um, address that a little bit more, please. Sure, there's an expectation that there are over 200 minutes per resident provided in care and of that there is a percentage around about 40 hours or oh, sorry 40 minutes that must be demonstrated as a registered nurse now i'm not as familiar with all of the latest numbers but the requirement of the organization is to prove that they have provided that direct care a number of minutes per resident per day in order to continue to receive funding so it doesn't matter it doesn't um 
plan out, it doesn't map out, sorry, to be, you know, one to eight residents or of any of that nature. It is based upon the acuity level effectively and the care minutes minimum requirements. So an organisation must have, and that doesn't include um, a number of different functions that nurses might do that are much more related to paperwork. It is looking at the care minutes and the direct care. And so hopefully the organisations, and I would expect the organisations that you go to, would have those minimum minutes in their roster and available to ensure that the residents are receiving all of the care minutes that are expected for them. And I can't imagine, I know the various different um, organisations that are signing up to OzPath and the ones that I know, they're amazing, great organisations who are very committed to the aged care sector, and so they would be. And I'm mentioning this because I know nurses can be very cynical and we can, we will know if we think that we're not going to have our care, you know, minutes monitored and managed appropriately, um, you cannot get away with that in aged care in Australia. It is a requirement and it is a reportable requirement. So you've got a much better chance of having that support and having the people on the ground to assist you. It, it provides, it does actually provide for holistic care. And that, that was the question, um, providing holistic care to patients. So again, in aged care, in Australia, um, so this is for the Filipino nurses coming back through, we don't call people patients in aged care, they're residents. It is their home and in Australia, uh, one of the biggest things that we uh, promote is that in care in Australia, we promote a home-like environment, okay? And as uh, Dr. Lee uh, said, it should be like going into a five-star resort type of thing. And that, that's the level of care that we're trying to achieve out there and making sure that we're covering all the aspects of the person as a whole. That is holistic care. Not just, again, not just tick a box, uh, check box, uh, checklist care, uh, not having a nursing home where you have 20 uh, residents um, just sitting around in a circle in a in a lounge room dining room all day long that doesn't you know that yes that can still exist in some instances but it is not the primary focus of care and that is a very old school uh, type of care so the australian framework has matured somewhat over the years out there to a level out there now that we can actually quite enlightened um, look at the level of care that we want for our loved ones out there. So um, for nurses considering um, going uh, international, Filipino nurses out there might be looking to go to the US or the UK or the Middle East. Um, the fact that they're coming to Australia enables that nurse to actually really look at their vocational nursing they're calling to become a nurse because nursing is a calling. So that vocational care that you signed up and you studied and you trained hard to go through, you've uh, gone through the process and the journey to do and complete your NCLEX environment to start the OBA pathway when you're looking at coming to Australia. Yes, you have to come to Australia and you achieve your OSCE examination to become a equivalency for as a registered nurse in Australia. But at the end of the day, you must uh, go back to where you started the reason why that you chose this vocation. And the reason is there is that you want to care. It is called aged care. Frank, another question coming from Melo. May I ask if there is any sponsorship? Yes, there certainly is. Uh, uh, Les is here as well out there. So uh, Les is our CEO out there. He can talk a little bit about the sponsorship perhaps out there. We have uh, several employers looking uh, for candidates out there. So, Les, um, uh, Rachel, would you like to un unmute Les, please? <laughs> Thank you. Is uh, your mic on mute as well, Frank? Yep. Right. Frank and I are actually here in uh, Makati, Manila, Philippines, right at this moment. Uh, we're actually in the same hotel room, which is why my phone's a little bit wobbly and my photo not normally in my office. In, back in uh, Davao, and, uh, but we are putting together a, a lot of deals at the moment, and uh, one of our main reasons uh, of coming to McCarty was to speak to some potential business partners about some really big opportunities 
coming up in Australia uh, for sponsorship for international nurses. And that will hopefully be uh, for thousands and thousands of nurses to come to Australia with uh, sponsorship requirements. We've currently got nearly 30 employers on our uh, platform as well now that are uh, sponsoring nurses to come to Australia. Yeah, and I mean, last week we got sponsorship just, just last week for 10 nurses, um, a lot from the Philippines, but not just Philippines, but from around the world, Nepal, India, different places. They're coming from everywhere now, even Singapore, UK, um, yeah. Ghana is another place. But yeah, there's different sponsorship paths and it depends on where you are. Obviously, you want to try to complete that OBA as far as you can if you're a Stream B nurse um, to get you out for registration. The further are you down the track on your OBA, the more likely you are to get your sponsorship. But we do have different pathways. Uh, we have the traditional pathways once you've gone through and done your N NCLEX training, which we highly recommend you do with IPASS processing and then move through to your OSCE training. Then you can apply for your AFRA registration and then um, you really go to the top of the list at that point. But there's some different tr transitional pathways that we've developed, which allow um, nurses to come in under a, tr a transitional pathway, work as personal care assistants under a couple of different models. We don't want to go into that too much detail here because uh, they are on our blog sites and uh, one of them we've, we're not really uh, revealing to the general public, but if you get on our platform, you and and you get a job offer, then you'll find out what that is. But we want to give that one away. That's a little bit of a secret. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just age care. Age limits. Age limits. Oh, sure. Well, the traditional uh, pathway is is uh, age limit is forty five, but we do have some of our employers, which are under the designated area migration agreements. That can go. That can have a special arrangement up to fifty-five. Okay, but we generally recommend that you, that you start the process as early as you can. So if you're over forty-five, yes, generally up to fifty-five. And it's quite surprising, but a lot of those employers too really value the experience of the uh, nurses that are forty-five years plus. We've had some just specifically just wanting that, um, but they have to be in a special areas. Uh, generally in, in the regional areas there as well. So, yeah, there is an age limit, but it's generally 45 or up to 55 in the designated yeah, area. There's rules for different uh, regional areas. So, so yeah. But we encourage everyone to register on our site. Um, we put the link there in the comments there, but everyone should know if they're on the Facebook Live they, where they can click on and um, go there, register. Everybody gets a free consultation uh, with our onboarding manager and they can ask as many questions as they like. And there's a lot of information on our blog site. Just be mindful, we've clocked over the one hour mark there. So we're running a little bit late again. But I just want to thank Dr. Caroline Lee. It's been a long time coming. We've been trying, trying, trying as hard as we can to get her on the show. <laughs> and we finally achieved that goal today. And I know it's been a little bit of a difficult time for Dr. Caroline Lee at the moment. So. Having her on board uh, today was um, very, very, very special. So we'd like to obviously thank you so much for coming on our show and giving that information. If anybody else has any um, questions, whatever, they just pop them in the comments. We'll get back to them and answer there in the question then. Got to be very mindful of Dr. Caroline Lee's time at the moment as well. But once again, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Caroline Lee. And of course, for giving us the opportunity to be able to provide the OSPATH nurses and allied health professionals access to free training with the Platinum 6 software. And that's pretty much an exclusive arrangement that we've been able to do, obviously, through our connections with Dr. Caroline Lee and Frank as well, being instrumental as well with Dr. Caroline Lee in, in the software development side and things like that as well. So um, we've, we've got um, first-hand knowledge of, of the product and um, people can get that free training by pretty much registering with us and then um, yeah, just thankful that uh, Dr. Caroline Lee's giving that training free, which makes the nurses that come through OSPATH, um, you know, some of the most highly sought after professionals in the world and not just in Australia, but seven countries <laughs> as well. So I think I'll leave it on that. Maybe if Dr. Caroline Lee wants to do a bit of a close and then hand it over to you, Rachel, to, uh, to close for today. Thank you. Look, I just wanted to thanks. Thank you so much, Liz. That was very kind. And 
Just want to encourage all nurses. My background is as a registered nurse. My PhD was in geriatric nursing because of my passion. And look, um, that is a family passion that I've been privileged to be born into. And the commitment that we have with OzPath is there obviously because of those connections, but also just because of the fact that if you're a nurse, we wanna support you and we wanna make sure that whatever journey you have in your family life and how you want to proceed your career, that it is done in a supported, pastorally loving way and that you are as an individual nurse going to hopefully feel that your next career path and next phase is not going to be negative, that it's going to be a positive one. So we're very happy to be with OzPath and get involved to that extent for that reason. And um, thank you so much, Caroline. Just one, one last quick question um, asked before we go, how many years of work experience needed? Uh, to work in Australia as a registered nurse, generally it is two years. However, the requirement is changing um, as of November 23rd this year, that will actually go down to one years. So that means after your um, your grad nurse, your grad year, one one year of clinical experience, and then you can come to Australia. And after one year um, working, you can in Australia as well. Then you can actually apply for registered nurse, or you can go do the OSCE and then have the equivalency. Uh, however, if you do not have that, even just as a grad nurse coming back through, the it, there is a way. Uh, we encourage you to contact us that you can come to Australia and work as a carer, uh, earn some money to basically then um, apply for your OSCE examination for your registered nurse equivalency. Again, um, currently the legislation is two years of clinical experience before you can be sponsored out there to work as a registered nurse. That is changing shortly, very, very soon to one year. So by all means, um, we encourage you to join up on our portal. So, Rachel, I'll get you to pop it up onto uh, the screen there. It's crm.ospath.agency. So it's free to join our agency. You can, um, once you have joined, you will have the benefit of a interview session. We guarantee that someone will be talking to you and going through your particular needs, all right? So you can have that uh, usually about 45 minutes to an hour session with you to go through all the questions that you want. But just remember that the portal itself is a personal advertisement for you to Australian employers, all right? So we encourage you to join up for free and put as much information as you can um, on that portal. The more information that you put on there, the more likely that you will get offered um, interviews that will lead to permanent residency with your employment. All right, thank you, Rachel. Frank, there is an appreciation coming from Janilda here. It's such an impressive Electronic Medical Record System. Thank you, Dr. Caroline, for the presentation. Very welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Caroline, for uh, your time and your expertise, and your knowledge and sharing, whatever you have shared for our discussion today. I know that uh, nurses here uh, has gained a lot of information coming from your presentation. I And I can really see the importance of having an electronic medical records because everything is already there in one place. So we can, we can ensure that there is continuity in care when it comes to the nursing care provided to the residents. Thank you so much, Dr. Caroline. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Les, for the very- Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Thank you, Les. Thanks, Caroline. Session. Thanks everyone for joining us. audience. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you on the next webinar.